write in the chat box how is the corona situation there on bangalore pune i think it has come down considerably all over india fortunately things are getting better thank you so much for your feedback thank you it's better in pune as well great great since last two months it was a very horrible situation all over india fortunately the cases has come down but we have to take a precaution okay not to escalate these cases by wearing mask having social distancing not going to the crowded places वेलकम शुभम अग्रवाल जी हाउ आर यू वेर आर यू फ्रॉम राइट इन द चैट बॉक्स वेलकम नम्रता जी राइट इन द चैट बॉक्स हाउ आर यू एंड वेर आर यू फ्रॉम एंड वेर आई एम ऑडिबल टू यू आई एम विजिबल टू यू Yes, thank you so much, Namrata ji, for your feedback. Am I audible to you and visible? Yes, Shubham ji, you are from Mathura. Great. Thank you so much for your feedback. I am audible as well as visible. So, what is the situation of Corona on your part on Mathura, Mumbai? I think the cases has come down, but what is the situation in Mathura? corona situation has it came down the cases number of cases has reduced oh cases are decreasing in mathura great great to know that welcome said ji how are you write in the chat box where are you from welcome atul ji write in the chat box how are you and where are you from we'll start this session within one or two minutes we'll just introduce that in the Hi Sayed ji, Hi Atul ji. Write in the chat box. Where are you from? Just introduce yourself. Where are you from? Okay, Sayed ji, you are from Bangalore. Atul ji is from Pune. Great. So good morning, friends. so we'll start our session today so today's topic is how to burn belly fat okay uh, ultimate guide to the healthy diet okay so we all know that nutrition is very essential for maintaining optimum health okay so that's why i have covered this topic today i'd like to have a poll 
Now we'll just have a poll. Let's see. The first question is, do you want to lose weight and become slim and fit? Okay, so I'm launching the poll. You will get 10 seconds, okay? Right in the grade, only 3%. All, all just all friends should participate. Only 66% has participated. If you want to lose weight, if you want to become slim and fit, write in the chat box. If you write it, you get it. Okay. So I'm ending the poll. So all the people want to lose weight and become slim and fit. Great, great. So I'm launching a second poll. Do you want to know which is the best diet? Okay, so I'm launching the poll. Do you want to know which is the best diet? I want to know what is your concept about diet so that we can clarify it. So I'm ending the poll. 86% want to know which is the best diet. Okay. Great, great. Okay, so third poll. We'll go for a third poll. Poll three. So which is the best diet? Okay, so I'm launching a poll. Which is the best diet? Low fat diet, ketogenic diet, high protein diet, or none of the above. So Great, I want everybody to participate. If you participate, then you will get a lot of nuggets from today's session. So I'm ending the poll, okay? So 29% says ketogenic diet, 43% says high protein diet, and 29% says none of the above. So we are going to clarify our doubt today, which is the best diet. Number four poll, okay. How many times one should eat every day? Okay, so one time, two times, three times, four times, or more than four times. Write in, just participate in the poll. How many times one should eat? Kindly participate in the poll. So I'm ending the poll. <clears throat> so 50% says two times, 38% says three times, 13% says four times. Okay, so we are going to solve this query as well. When at the end of this session, you will know what, how many times one should eat. And this is the last poll. So which is the best method to assess obesity, whether it is weight, whether it is body mass index or whether it is weight to hip ratio. It's okay, I'm ending the poll. So 75% says a body mass index is a best method and 25% says best to hip ratio. So again, we are going to clarify ourselves today. So dear friends,
so welcome vaibhav ji dr vaibhav ji dr hiral hiral ji kamal ji manu ji saket ji write in the chat box how are you and where are you from introduce yourself okay so this is a a kind of a, a informal decision okay write in the chat box where are you from uh, those who have not introduced here are the new participants so kamal ji is from delhi thank you so much for joining hiral ji is from ahmedabad manu ji is from simla great great to you great you having for here so friends so we're going to start today's session so today i'm going to discuss about how to reduce belly fat and it is without without dieting okay so thank you so much from bottom of my heart for uh, to all of you for joining for today's session today sunday you might be doing so many things but you chose to come here you want to know what is the best way to eat what are the best food to eat and what is the best diet so thank you so much for joining for today's session so today's learning objective is we are going to discuss uh, about uh, basic about diet okay then prevalence of obesity diabetes diabetes what are the causes of obesity and diabetes which is the best diet what is the best way to eat food hmm? and about intermittent fasting and at the end of session i'm going to introduce you uh, to my community if you want to take your health to the next level then you can join my community at the end of the session so i just want to have some instruction have pen and paper with you so that something which you can learn today which you don't know and it can transform your life so you when you put in a paper you remember it when you remember it you take action and you take action it change your life so i have pen and paper with you okay first of all if you have something to do any emergency thing that you can live because if you being here for half of the talk and you go then it will cause more harm rather than causing health so if you commit today that you going to attend this session it will completely transform your life okay because i am going to share some life transforming principle with you and thousands of people has transformed their life so just to introduce myself friends my name is dr sunil sabre basically i am a pediatric neurologist i am a neurologist and i am also a stress management consultant wellness coach and international number one best seller author i remember five years back my health was in a bad shape i was completely stressed out and burnt out i had put on 10 kg of weight and i was looking much older than my chronological age then i stopped i introspected whether i was living the life mechanically or i was enjoying it i started reading books self help books spiritual books i listened to a lot of audio books i formulated certain principle i implemented it and it completely transformed my life i lost 10 kg of weight i was looking much younger than my chronological age my work efficiency improved my relationship with my partners colleagues improved so i started sharing this principle by conducting seminar workshop webinars and thousands of people has transformed their life then my friends asked me to spread to millions of people so i wrote a book uh, this book o stress give me a break i have published on amazon and you can see here it has become an international best seller okay 
Again, recently I have published a book named 17 Powerful Secrets to Manage Stress During Corona Pandemic. So, dear friends, there are a lot of information on YouTube, but it lacks focus. Okay, you can get information out about diet, but you do not get clarity. If you want to transform your life, what you require is a clarity. And what brings transformation is clarity, focus, and mentor. Because we all know that resolution fail, but habit succeed. This is the thing which I learned. Resolution fails, habit succeed. So what do you mean by that? Okay, so how, I just I want to stop this thing. And I want to ask how many people do resolution on first gen? Okay, means you have decide that I will do these things and how many people do resolution in new year resolution and how many stick to, uh, stick to that resolution? Write in the chat box. I want it to be interactive. Write in the chat box, how, ma how many do resolution that I'm gonna join gym from 1st of March. I'm gonna eat healthy food from 1st of March. I'm gonna do meditation from 1st of, uh, of Jan, sorry. So how many do the resolution? <laughs> okay, write in the chat box. Let it be interactive session. Okay, if it is interactive, if you, if you participate, then you will ta take a lot of things from it. Yes, you, yes, I take resolution, but never stick. Yes, not me. Write in the chat box. So we all do resolution, okay? And uh, very rarely we stick to this resolution. So why does it happen? Okay. So there was an experiment done by NASA. They uh, divided the astronaut into two groups. One group, they, uh, they gave a goggle. It was a special type of goggle. When you wear that goggle, the image you see is flipped 180 degree. So, okay. so it, the image will see up and down. If you're seeing some human being, it will see as a up, down, up, up, down. So it would be flipped by 180 degree. So they divided the astronaut into two groups. For one group, group A, they asked to wear this goggle throughout the day, okay? And they asked group B to wear this goggle whenever they want. And what they found that after 21 days, the astronaut in group A started seeing the image normally. And by 30 days, they started, all the astronaut in group A started seeing the image normally, okay? And in B, group B, nobody started, they kept on seeing the image upside down, okay? So what this, uh, 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 what this experiment uh, tells, us, uh, tells us about? So it says, so because first group wear that goggle continuously, okay? And group B, they wear it intermittently. So if, you do anything consistently over a period of 21 to 30 days. Okay, so this can change your subconscious mind. It goes in a subconscious mind. It becomes your habit. Okay, it, your brain rewires if you do anything consistently over a period of 21 to 30 days. So that's why the habit succeed because your resolution comes from your conscious mind, but your subconscious mind is much more powerful from the, your, uh, than your uh, conscious mind. That's why the resolution fail. So that's why you need to, if you want to do certain things, if you want to wake up early in the morning, go to gym or have a healthy diet habit, you have to do it consistently for at least 21 to 30 days. If you do it, then it will become your habit and you don't have to do it consciously. Okay, you will do it automatically. So. Is it clear now why the resolution fails? Okay. So do you think that the prevention is better than cure? Do you think that the health is well? And write in the chat box, how many of you are committed for the taking your health to the next level? So to begin, I'm going to share you some statistics about 
the diseases which are caused by unhealthy diet mainly obesity diabetes and it consequently lead to heart disease cancer and other things so more than 2.1 billion adults are overweight and 650 millions are obese worldwide approximately 2.8 million deaths are reported as results of being overweight and obese so we all know that during this corona pandemic the most death occur when the person has underlying chronic disorder and especially obesity diabetes and heart disease we all know that the mortality in this corona pandemic occurred in a people who has underlying this chronic disorders so this chronic disorder not only shorten your life on a longer basis it shorten in, in a acute state in corona pandemic as well and if you have this disorder you have to consume a lot of pills for a period of years and your quality of life suffers okay in india more than 135 million individual means 13 crore people are affected by obesity according to the study okay the number of obese people overweight and obese people has increased from 860 million to 2.1 billion in 2013 means almost one third people are either overweight or obese worldwide diabetes currently affects 62 million indians which is about 7% of adult population so this is very conservative estimate and i think the actual figure are much more and there are certain people who are in a pre diabetic state okay so the problem is huge now what happens the diabetes in other part of the world starts in later part but in india it starts around 42 years okay and nearly 1 million people die because of diabetes every year in india and globally 420 million adults are living with diabetes and the number is going to get doubled in 2030 and it is the same for india so this statistics are quite mind blowing uh, boggling so 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 why this uh, obesity diabetes heart diseases are increased we are going to see during this today's uh, se uh, today's session now what are the method with which you can assess your physical health okay so one way is of course weight okay but the weight has to be taken into consideration with height age sex and your activity as well the first method you can utilize is body mass index so what is body mass index it is weight in kilogram divided by height in meter square okay so this is a body mass index and if the body mass index is above 30 then it is obesity and if it is more than 25 then it is overweight but what happens in a <clears throat> department of endocrinology in uk they found that the pe two people their two faculty they had the same body mass index but their fat composition were were different okay so even if you have a same body mass index your fat composition may be different now there are two types of obesity it's a, a central obesity is a peripheral obesity okay now in the research it is found that those people who have central obesity they have high incidence of developing diabetes hypertension heart disease okay as compared to those who have a peripheral obesity so central obesity is the main a uh, killer so how to assess this central obesity so this is assessed with the help of waist to hip ratio okay so you can do it at your home it doesn't require any expensive instrument how you have to measure you have to take the waist circumference just above or below the level of umbilicus or at the level of umbilicus and you have to take a hip circumference at the level of your buttock maximum circumference and divide this waist by hip uh, by hip uh, reading so this is called as waist to hip ratio and according to who if waist to hip ratio is more than 0.9 in male and 0.85 in female is obesity it's a central obesity so is it clear you can assess it at home so 
this is the best method okay the bmi there is a lot of flaw yes it is very useful lot of study has been done taking of bmi into consideration but this simple waist to hip ratio is the most simple way and the best way to assess your obesity so this you can do at home and then you don't have to have a weighing scale or something to monitor your obesity okay so this is simple way and you can monitor at home also so why these diseases are increasing so those who think that they don't have a time for healthy eating they soon have to find a time to get uh, to find uh, the time for illness so there are so many causes the lifestyle has changed we have eating unhealthy food there sedentary lifestyle is lot of pollution there is lot of stress all are contributing for increasing in this disorder but the main thing is unhealthy diet the unhealthy diet is causing uh, this disorder to increase now i'm going to take you to the history human history of eating we all know our ancestor when they were hunter and gatherer they used to live in jungle okay and they used to go for hunting or they used to live in a cave and they used to eat fruits roots nuts and berries okay so they were quite healthy then with the ad advent of rudimentary weapon made up of stone they started hunting animal and started eating meal meat next came fish with agricultural invention almost 12000 years ago they started eating grains pulses and vegetable so till this time our ancestors were very healthy but with industrialization we have started eating refined food excess sugar processed food refined carbohydrate cold drinks and the problem started so as long as the human were consuming whole unprocessed food meat there were rare cases of obesity diabetes heart disease and cancer but once we started eating so called as western diet consisting of refined carbohydrate sugar cold drink processed meat the incidence of this chronic disorder like obesity diabetes heart disease cancer increased exponentially okay so you can see the diet of a primitive man 99% vegetable fruits roots legumes nuts and only 1% whole cereal and grain and modern man this has reduced to 23% and we are eating more of refined grain we are eating this new entity which were not known to our ancestor like refined artificial sugar sweetener packaged food pizzas burgers and this portion is increasing exponentially all over the world and this is the main cause of increasing obesity diabetes heart diseases okay so write in the chat box clarified cla clear now are you clear which is the best method to assess your weight your physical health okay write in the chat box w h waist to hip ratio if you are clear how to assess a simple way your physical health write in the chat box yes waist to hip ratio waist to hip ratio write in the chat box if you write it will go into your subconscious mind if you repeat it it will go into subconscious mind it will become your habit and we have seen that the habit is win in a long term if you have any questions you you can put it in a question and answer section because i'm going to have a question and answer session at the end of this session okay so waist to hip ratio is 
the best way now there was a old hypothesis that the obesity was because of eating too much and having less exercise the key assumption was calorie intake and expenditure are independent of each other now there has been various studies which was done and they found that if you decrease the caloric intake by 10% your energy your basal metabolic rate decrease by 15% okay and hunger is increased tremendously so when you do dieting you reduce your caloric intake consistently over a period of many days there is a decrease in basal metabolic rate your heart rate will reduce your respiratory rate will reduce your temperature will reduce your level of activity will reduce you will feel lethargic okay and you will always think of you will always think of food food in your mind in your dream okay so have you experienced this thing so this is the main reason the dieting fail okay because the body weight the body has a set point if you reduced your uh, intake the body adjust it and if you do it over a period of time that's why the dieting fail because if you reduce your caloric intake over a period of time the body adjust its basal metabolic rate and that's why the dieting fail because you get hungry as well and your basal metabolic you feel very lethargic and once you stop the dieting again you regain the weight what about exercise now mind you exercise is very essential for maintaining optimum health but remember the obesity and diabetes are disorder because of unhealthy diet and you cannot treat it with exercise yes it will help to reduce weight to reverse diabetes but it is not the only solution okay so if what i used to when when i started doing exercise i didn't give any attention to the diet i kept on consuming unhealthy diet and i used to find that why i am not losing weight i am running i am doing gym why i am not uh, losing weight okay so mind you the obesity diabetes are disorder because of unhealthy diet you have to treat it by changing your diet yes exercise is very essential but exercise only will not reduce your weight if you do not take care of your uh, diet okay so what the research says the research was done on women it's called as women's health study between 1992 to 2004 they included 40000 women and they asked them to do moderate aerobic exercise 60 minutes per day five uh, for five days per week okay so what was the result the average weight loss over a period of 3 years was only less than 1 kg okay so only 1/4 pound weight loss in 3 years by doing exercise and not giving any uh, uh credence to your diet okay so again there was other study done they were asked to do exercise 6 days per week for 1 hour and what was the result 1.4 kg weight loss in women and 1.8 kg weight loss in men again they did a study in a marathoner okay it was published in international journal of sport and medicine and what they found that in male average weight loss was 5 pounds and in women no weight loss okay and there was no change in the body composition was observed so what why does it happen so we all know that whenever even if you sit whole day there is a basal metabolic rate there is a basal energy expenditure going on in our body to maintain our lot of functions means pumping of heart respiration digestion so many things all cells are continuously working even if you are not doing any exercise or not doing any work so the average expenditure for a 70 kg of person is 2200 to 2500 calories per day okay but the calorie expenditure for 45 minutes walk was is only 102 calories so it's only 4% of calorie intake okay so even if you do exercise it constitute only 4% of the caloric expenditure and you forget 96%
a, a basal metabolic rate okay so this exercise will not help to reduce weight it will help to set an extent but not the only solution exercise has other advantage it increases muscle tone it increases the insulin sensitivity of muscle decrease vascular disease like heart disease hypertension increase bone density decrease your stress anxiety so many benefits of exercise okay but it is for that you cannot use it okay so if you have a hypertension and you could if you take a pill of diabetes it won't work okay so the disease of obesity and diabetes are because of unhealthy diet it has to be solved with eating healthy diet the exercise may be add on but it is not a solution the only solution why the exercise do not lose weight because we concentrate only 4% of the caloric expenditure and there is a compensation effect because if you do exercise there is increase appetite and when you do exercise for 30 minutes you think that hey it's okay now i can become a couch potato and whole day we keep on sitting okay so we decrease other activity as well so what is a responsible for obesity now in a, a journal named lancet one study was published in 1998 and they found that the insulin and any drugs which increases insulin level like sulfonylurea causes weight gain and those drugs which do not increase the insulin like dp4 inhibitors and metformin do not increase the weight okay we all know the patients of type 1 diabetic they present with weight loss and this is because of insulin deficiency when you put them on insulin they gain weight so insulin causes weight gain so and there is other hormone called as cortisol so if you give steroid externally it causes weight gain and if the steroid this hormones cortisol is increased endogenously it causes cushing disease and if there is a deficiency of this cortisol in addison disease there is a weight loss so insulin and cortisol are two hormone which causes weight gain now what happens now you just this is very essential if you know what, what is a problem in our diet our dietary habit then you will find a solution to it okay now what happens in routinely we have a breakfast we have a lunch we have a dinner okay now what happens when you we eat the beta cell the cell in pancreas secret hormone called as insulin okay now this insulin is like a key there is a cell this insulin goes attached to the cell and this cell opens its door for the glucose the glucose goes inside and it is utilized for our energy expenditure by the cell so this insulin is like a key we eat the insulin is secreted it goes into the cell membrane attached to the receptor the door open glucose goes in so your blood sugar low level remains normal because blood glucose goes into the cell and that is the purpose of our eating the the food should be converted into its uh, the minor parts like glucose amino acid fatty acid and all and it should goes inside the cell and it should be utilized for energy expenditure and other purpose so when we take a breakfast the insulin level increases okay and after a few hours it levels goes down okay so your insulin level goes down your beta cell in pancreas get rest again in lunch you eat your insulin level goes up your pancreas or beta cells or pancreas are working and again after a few hours it goes down and when you have a dinner you the, the level increases your beta cells are working and whole night the level are reduced your beta cells get rest again again in the morning they are fully charged energized and ready to work so this is a basic basic pattern of how the insulin works now what happens now what is happening nowadays okay we are eating too frequently okay we are having tea then we are having breakfast again we are snacking then we have lunch again at 5 o'clock we have to take snack 
dinner then we take ice cream dessert so we are kept on munching whole day okay so breakfast insulin goes up again when level are about to fall down beta cells are going to get rest again we are eating something we are having some teas again level goes up when it is about to fall we'll take lunch again goes up again in the evening we'll take a tea or something then snacks again go level goes up then dinner level goes up again have a dessert level goes up now what happens the level are consistently increasing in our body okay so we are just flogging the horse okay it's kind of a flogging the horse so what happens if you flog horse if it's running continuously it will get tired isn't it so we are just flogging our beta cells of pancreas the levels are consistently increasing and what happens any it's a body's defense mechanism any substance which is consistently elevated in a body body develop resistance it is a survival me uh, a mechanism if anything increases body's tolerance level increases otherwise we will die so what happens as the insulin level are consistently increasing then there is no rest the body develop resistance the cell develop resistance so the the insulin uh, doesn't act properly to on the cell so the cell doesn't open the glucose remain in uh, our blood our blood sugar shot shoots up and it causes diabetes okay so what happens the body gets sense that oh the the, the sugars uh, are not entering in the cells though the sugars is very high in the blood then the beta cell secrete more insulin again more insulin more resistance so this vicious cycle goes and it causes insulin resistance so because of insulin resistance insulin increases and we have seen that the insulin causes weight gain so this is the first hormone this is the main hormone which causes weight gain so insulin resistance is the main cause of obesity diabetes hypertension heart disease there are many other causes pollution there is lack of exercise sedentary lifestyle where stress but this is the main reason insulin resistance is the main reason which causes obesity now what happens all the uh, substances do not increase the insulin level the unprocessed food unprocessed carbohydrate the glycemic index is very less so the the amount of insulin the amount of glucose it releases is very less and the amount of insulin is released is very less but when we eat processed food sugar cold drink the level shoots up because it is high glycemic index food so as we are eating processed carbohydrate sugar processed uh, packaged food which contain high sugar our level of insulin are increasing and as we are snacking eating many times per day it's causing insulin resistance okay so is it clear now so initially we have seen that we were 50% insulin dominant state and 50% insulin deficient state now we are 80% insulin dominant state and only 20% insulin uh, deficient state that's the cause of obesity okay so all clear about what is the cause of obesity write in the chat box and the other cause is cortisol okay we have seen and why cortisol is increase increasing because of stress we are under constant stress and because of that the cortisol level are increasing and this cortisol causes weight gain so write in the chat box because if you are clear about what causes obesity then you can find a solution for that write in the chat box are you clear thank you so much for feedback now we all know that wheat is our staple food okay 
but the problem of wheat is many. In the research, it's found that the modern wheat is of lower nutritional value. Okay, modern processing uh, remove most of the vitamin, fiber, and fats. Now our ancestor used to use this stone grinding method for consuming wheat. Okay, and this stone grinding, the fiber, the fat, used to remain there, and we used to eat. Though it was very coarse, but it has a very high nutritional value. because the fiber reduce the glycemic index the fat reduce the glycemic index but because of the modern milling we are doing the fine powder of the wheat and it is as good as sugar it is shooting your sugar level to a great extent so we are eating this wheat in a modern way it contain high amount of amylopectin a which is highly digestible so it shoots your Uh, uh, glucose level uh, to the roof. It is addictive as well. So uh, you you might have seen that you eat bread. You eat a lot of bread. Okay, you eat uh, uh, the uh, donuts or other things which is made up of wheat, and you you eat so much that you don't know how much you have eat. Okay, so it's addictive. It's research. It's found that the wheat is addictive. and now there is a genetic modification of wheat okay initially the crop of wheat used to have a huge height now the crop is of a very dwarf uh, nature the size of wheat is increased but the nutritional value has reduced and there is doubling of the chromosome of the wheat because of the genetic modification we have done because of hybridization and that's why the main component of wheat called as gluten has changed and most of the people are not able to tolerate this gluten and it is causes gluten sensitivity and uh, you you are aware of the fact that there is so much of increase in gluten sensitivity and because of this genetic modification there is a gluten sensi uh, the gluten sensitivity is increasing and there's so many disorder caused by gluten uh, sensitivity so wheat as per uh its natural state is not bad but genetically modified wheat and the way we are eating it we are refining it we are eating excessively now the consumption of wheat has doubled as you uh, know over a period of 20 years in the research it's found that so we are consuming lot of wheat and we are overloading our body with the gluten now this new entity has added up because of this industrialization high fructose corn syrup now this high fructose corn syrup is present in all processed food cold drinks okay then sauce then jam jelly and all other things and it is highly processed okay so it increases your insulin level to the roof it causes de novo fat synthesis and lead to obesity and diabetes okay it is better it is better you consume sugar rather than consuming high fructose corn syrup now the multinational company fools you that this is a uh, no sugar diet coke or no sugar uh, stuff actually it contain high fructose corn syrup okay so rather than eating sugar okay sugar is better than this high fructose corn syrup means sugar is bad but it is less bad as compared to high fructose corn syrup because the company puts label no sugar but it actually contain high fructose corn syrup okay now carbohydrate is not only the one which increases the insulin level it is animal protein as well like eggs turkey fish whey it also increase your insulin level so that's why there was one diet in between it's called as atkin diet which was a fad few years back and it was high protein high fat diet and it felt miserably as well so why they thought that carbohydrate causes insulin increase and so they are asked to eat lot of proteins animal proteins and all and what happens uh, the uh, it failed miserably because this animal protein is also insulinogenic now what is now cause of obesity now this is a new theory now the theory will keep on coming initially it was calorie depend on calorie now it depends on hormone but it seems to me a logical 
and with the common sense huh? so what does hormonal theory of obesity which is uh, propagated by jason fung and other is that the obesity is because of increased insulin insulin resistant and cortisol and why insulin level are increasing because we are consuming high protein animal protein we are consuming fattening carbohydrate processed food wheat then high fructose corn syrup which is increasing our insulin level and as we are eating frequently whole day it is causing insulin resistance and cortisol is increasing because of the stress so this in causes obesity hypertension diabetes fatty liver this is called as metabolic syndrome disease of civilization these diseases were not known before industrialization to the ancestor and we have done so much of research on nutrition we came with the concept of protein fat carbohydrate vitamin minerals nutrients which were not our ancestor were not aware of it though they were not aware of it they were consuming healthy food they were healthy and we are aware of all the science all the nutrients and we are becoming more and more obese more and more, more diabetic no more and more uh, uh, heart disease so science should have helped us to reduce this disease but actually there so many uh, theory which goes on and it negates the actual purpose of food and it reduces that food to the nutrients and carbohydrate and proteins so remember the insulin resistance and cortisol are responsible for obesity diabetes heart disease though other causes like stress pollutions and other things also takes uh, sedentary lifestyle also is responsible for this disease and this insulin is increased because of processed carbohydrate excess refined wheat high animal protein high fructose corn syrup and stress clear right in the chat box clear everyone clear about this till now write in the chat box clear clear thank you so much if you are clear what causes this obesity diabetes then you know what is the solution okay thank you so much for the feedback now what is the best diet okay now i'd like to share one uh, uh incidents now i uh, i'd like to share in hindi we all know we have undergone examination interview in our life when we go to interview we are so stressed that we don't know what the examiner is asking what the person who is taking interview is asking and second thing some persons comes out of the interview we ask him hey what questions has been asked okay so this is a common thing ek bar kya hota hai ki ek one student goes for interview to so examiner usko poochte hain uh bharat ke pantapradhan ka naam bataiye to bolta hai ki vishva prasiddh manya shri narendra bhai modi bole very good bole bharat ko kab swatantrata mili bole waise to sangharsh ki shuruaat 1856 uh, uh, 1857 mein hui लेकिन बहुत ही संघर्ष के बाद 15 अगस्त उन्नीस को भारत को स्वतंत्रता मिली और उसमें हमारे पड़ोसी का बहुत बड़ा हाथ था लेकिन उनके साथ हमारे रिश्ते अभी अच्छे नहीं बोले वेरी गुड बोले मार्स में पानी है क्या तो बोलता है साइंटिस्ट ने ढूंढ के निकाला है लेकिन डिक्लेयर करना बाकी है तो ये बंदा इंटरव्यू लेके बाहर आता है तो जो दूसरा बंदा का इंटरव्यू रहता है उसको पूछते है क्वेश्चन क्या पूछे तो अंदर से आवाज आता है कि किसका इंटरव्यू तो बोलते हैं सिर्फ आंसर बता मुझे आंसर बता तो बोलता है क्वेश्चन तो पूछ बोला नहीं नहीं सिर्फ आंसर बता तो उसको बताता है आंसर तो ये बंदा इंटरव्यू को जाता है तो एग्जामिनर उसको पूछते हैं कि तुम्हारा नाम बता तो ही इज वेरी स्ट्रेस और उसने रटा हुआ रहता है तो बोलता है कि विश्व प्रसिद्ध मान्य श्री नरेंद्र भाई मोदी बोले वॉट बोले तुम्हारा जन्म कब हुआ बोले वैसे तो संघर्ष की शुरुआत अठारह में हुई लेकिन बहुत संघर्ष के बाद 15 अगस्त उन्नीस को मेरा जन्म हुआ बोले आर यू मैड बोले साइंटिस्ट ने फाइंड आउट किया है सिर्फ डिक्लेयर करना बाकी है 
so okay <laughs> so what happens the light puts a different question in front of you if you have a preset answer it will not solve the problem okay if you have a preset answer to each and every question it will not solve problem okay every day there is new question like put in front of you so similarly if you have a certain guidelines ki eat low fat diet eat this eat that it doesn't solve the problem okay because people living in asia has different culture different environment as compared to the people living in america or in alaska in australia in russia the atmosphere is different the culture is different the food which is produced is different okay so you don't have you can't have a set of guideline one set of guideline okay eat this and don't eat this okay there may be some but you cannot be rigid the food should be different to different culture and it suits, suits to its environment so there has been lot of research done about diet because initially in 1970 the dietary guidelines came that eat low fat diet because they found that the fat especially the saturated fat is the culprit it leads to increase in the cholesterol it cholesterol goes blocks your artery and it gives you heart disease now this was because of the framingham study done by harvard university and it was it has completely means it was increase the uh, the epidemic of obesity and diabetes what happens as they vilified fat the carbohydrate carbohydrate has given a upper hand and the industry exploited it and lot of packaged food came up with low fat uh, biscuit low fat cookies low fat this low fat that and what happens there are only th three things there is a protein fat and carbohydrate if you reduce car fat you have to increase the carbohydrate and carbohydrate was given a free hand and lot of refined carbohydrate sugar salt were added and this has caused the obesity epidemic after 1970 when the uh, the the guidelines of this low fat diet came into hope so the low fat diet become uh, one of the contributor for the uh, because of this guideline we have a one set guideline then they came with the atkins diet again it miserably failed so you might be bombarded with uh, by your doctor or your nutritionist that eat low fat diet eat this high protein diet eat that so it doesn't help at all and in the research it is found that this kind of guideline doesn't work so you might be confused now what i should eat now there has been research done on various culture and their dietary pattern and the incidence of disease and they have also research when these people migrate to cities and what happens to their uh, pattern of diseases now these are the eskimos okay so this eskimo are meat eater the vegetable part of the diet is meager one but there is a no chronic disorder in the eskimos when they started eating modern western diet the incidence of obesity diabetes heart disease cancer increased then take the example of maasai tribe they are the healthiest people on the earth what they eat they eat milk meat animal blood and rarely fresh leafy vegetable but the hypertension obesity diabetes cancer is almost non existent in them then tuki center this is a new guinea highland tribes and it is extensively studied and the investigator found that they are fit lean muscular with no signs of protein deficiency and 94% of their energy intake is from carbohydrate okay so you can see here eskimos lot of protein fat here lot of protein fat here lot of carbohydrate no diseases now kitawa study uh, this thing 70% of their diet is from carbohydrate fruits vegetable root fish coconut and no incidence of stroke diabetes dementia congestive heart failure no obesity excellent blood pressure okay now this is the okinawa tribe in japan so this is one of the region which is included in blue zone so what is a blue zone in blue zone the average lifespan is above 80 90 okay and you can find many people 
above 100 years they are working okay so 90 80 90 years working dancing is very common in this and okinawa in japan is one of this so their life expectancy is highest among the world and what they consume 85% of their diet comes from carbohydrate and they are noted for low mortality from cardiovascular disease compared to the average japanese diet so they have they consume 20% less calorie they eat lot of green yellow vegetable less rice and their staple is a sweet potato 20% of less sugar means 20% of the sugar they consume less sugar more of vegetable and all now the immigration study was done okay so they found that the japanese in japan has lower risk of myocardial infarction than japanese in united states of america africa in africa has much lower risk of myocardial infarction than african in united states of america okay so the same people same genetic material but living in a different having a different dietary pattern and the incidence of myocardial infarction is very high what about cancer they found that those people who immigrated from japan to the united states within first generation the risk of <clears throat> cancer increased by 60% and within second generation risk equal so why it happened because they started following the western diet so though their genetic makeup doesn't cause them to have myocardial infarction cancer but as they the environment is modified their dietary pattern their lifestyle is modified the incidence of myocardial infarction and cancer increase exponentially so conclusion of this study is that the population got to be healthy with diet of 95% of carbohydrate or 95% of meat protein or 95% 90% of fat okay so protein fat carbohydrate are not problem okay the problem is the way we are eating the problem is refining the problem is processing the problem is sugar the problem is in the way the we are eating so in this population it's rare to find western disease eating traditional diet and there is low serum insulin level okay because they do not consume refined or processed food they do not consume flour no sugar but when this piece, uh, people started eating western diet the diseases of obesity diabetes heart disease increase but the good point is that they the researchers again this put these people back to their original diet and what they found that the the obesity reduced by 80% diabetes reduced by 80% and colonic cancer reduced by 70% so it's very good to hear that so this this science is very helpful and this is very common sense science okay so science tells you that if you eat a traditionally culturally suitable diet even if you don't know what calorie it contain what protein what vitamin what mineral it contain it doesn't cause disease but when you go and eat western refined diet sugar your diseases and case and if you again go back to your original diet then you can also reverse this diseases this is very good which has been found in the research so what one should eat to remain healthy so till now everything is clear i have ask a question in the poll which is the best diet now i think i have solved this uh, uh, this question has been cleared every everyone clear right clear which diet is the best right right in the chat box clear write write your feedback clear thank you so much for your feedback so okay somebody ask me 
Kamal Sani has asked for Indian population, any specific studies? In India, studies has been done. What happens? The studies in India is always lagging behind the studies. Okay. In Western, they have very meticulous way of doing studies. And yes, in India, there may be studies, but these are very uh, studies which has been published in a, what we call as a peer reviewed journals. Now, peer reviewed journals are means extreme, extremely authenticated. So these are the authentic, doesn't mean that Indian studies are not authentic, but these are presented in a reputed journal. These studies are present. And what we have to take from these studies, the, the problem is that we always go at a micro level and we do not see. So what we have to take from these studies is the people who eat traditional, culturally suitable, environmentally suitable diet are healthy. And those who take refined process Lexus sugar causes disease. So we have to take this lesson from these studies. So now the question comes, what one should eat to remain healthy? Okay. So according to the nutrition expert, Michael Pollan, our understanding of our nutrition is in infancy. We have seen that we recommend low fat diet, then comes Atkin diet, then comes Mediterranean diet, then comes low carbohydrate. So we can keep on changing uh, our goalpost and our uh, uh, recommendation. We do not know what is good for us, but we definitely know which is bad for us. And that is a Western diet. Okay. Now, what happens? What, because of this reductionist approach, we have reduced the food to protein, carbohydrate, fat, minerals and vitamin, we, it's, I, I, I call it, uh, it's called, called as a nutritionism. It is called as a religion. In religion, what happens? You have a God and we do not know God. So we take the help of priest. So there's something which is invisible and we take the help of God and the priest help us to know the God. Okay. Similarly, we don't know the carbohydrate, protein, minerals, vitamin, antioxidant in the food because it is seen by the scientist. So scientist acts like a priest to know that this is a uh, nutrients, antioxidant, beta carotene and all. And in religion, it is always there is a demon and there is a God. Okay. So similarly in nutrition, we have labeled certain nutrients as demon and certain nutrients as blessed. Okay. For example, nowadays the beta carotene, the omega-3 fatty acids are regarded as a blessed one while omega-6 fatty acids, saturated fat are demonized. Now this reductionist approach, reducing the food into this protein, fat, carbohydrate has caused many problems rather than solving the problem. Okay, for example, why does it happen? For example, the beta carotene in carrot is good for our health. But if we remove this beta carotene and give in the form of pills, it doesn't help. And in fact, those who uh, are alcoholic, if you give beta carotene, the incidence of the lung cancer, liver cancer increases. So beta carotene is good in carrot, but if you take it out and give as a nutrient, then it causes problem. And because of this reductionist approach, the corporation has taken, they exploited it. So they do not give you food, they give you nutrients. Okay, because the food doesn't give profit to them. If you reduce it, you sell low fat cookies, low fat biscuits and all, low uh, fat ice cream. Huh? So it, 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 it gives you, uh, gives them a lot of uh, profit. So why this happened? Because in bitter carotene in carrot, because in carrot, there are so many other things. There is so many fibers which help this beta carotene. Okay. Isolated beta carotene doesn't help because our gut has more neuron than brain. 
okay it's the neuron in our gut is equivalent to neuron in our spinal cord so they are more intelligent so because of our obsession to this fat carbohydrate protein calorie has caused more harm rather than solving this problem the carbohydrate protein fats are not problem but the insulin response and the uh, processing is the problem so according to michael pollan till the time the science of nutrition do not get mature enough to tell us what we should eat we should eat what is called as paleolithic diet the diet which our grandparent used to eat our ancestor used to eat and which is suitable to your culture and geography now remember this sentence the crux of all this talk comes and boils down to this sentence okay so we have to eat the way our grandparents used to eat our ancestors used to eat and which is suitable to your culture and geography there is no one set rule okay so if you have to summarize you have to eat food not too much mostly plant so this is michael pollan he has done extensive research and he you can read his book it is quite it just opens your mind and the he he narrowed down all his research that this is the only three sentence eat food not too much mostly plant that's it this is the take home message so what one should eat we have to eat whole unprocessed food colorful fruits vegetable salads sprouted beans cereal pulses which are rich in fiber you can eat homemade cheese or desi ghee or brown rice carbohydrate you have to eat complex carbohydrate but no simple sugar no high fructose corn syrup protein try to avoid animal protein eat maximum vegetable protein fat avoid refined vegetable oil now this refined vegetable oil is extremely bad it's highly inflammatory that ten process which is which is utilized to extract the oil and make it purified and during the ten process ten type of chemical is added and removed so it contain lot of chemical it's highly inflammatory it causes generalized body inflammation and this again contribute to obesity diabetes heart disease okay so initially they vilified saturated fat and they came up with refined vegetable oil and they said ki refined vegetable oil is best but in the research it's found that it is very bad initially our ancestors used to eat ghee cheese or butter which is homemade they said no 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 margarine is good and they started promoting margarine and the margarine gave so much of heart diseases to millions of people okay so we have to eat the fat which is naturally occurring now what happens they extract oil from the substance which doesn't contain oil for example groundnut has oil sunflower seeds has oil but they extract from maize they extract from soybean which doesn't contain oil as such so they require a lot of chemical process and that causes inflammation the chemical in vegetable oil is so what kind of oil we should have now we should try to have oil which is produced in this traditional ghana now this ghanas now are become automated instead of this uh, animal they use the machine which extract the oil now i have i'm using it now i have to give 10 kg of ground nuts okay and the person gives me only 2 and 1/2 to 3 liters of oil now take the calculation now the ground nut 1 kg ground nut cost maybe around 100 120 and for 10 kg you will spend 1200 rupees and from 1200 rupees you get oil 3 liters means how much it cost 1 liter cost 400 rupees now you imagine at what cost you are getting oil in uh, in the shop this processed oil initially we used to get at 80 90 rupees but recently the price has 
increased because of lockdown to 120 130 140 now imagine if you naturally extract the oil it cost you 400 per liter okay and you are getting oil which is 100 rupees at a mall or shop now can you imagine and this 100 rupees the the production cost may be very less because it gst is added and there's so many commission transport charges so many taxes is added so production cost may be 20 rupees or 30 rupees and you're getting at 100 120 but when you extract the oil from coconut naturally in this ghana it costs you 400 rupees so how is it possible okay so we are eating a lot of this inflammatory highly processed uh, uh, chemically contained uh, oil so if you want to lead healthy life then you consume less oil okay you eat a boiled steamed material or if you want to use oil then you can use oil which is extracted in this natural way okay so if you do this it will completely transform your uh, life now eat food which is grown on healthy oil like organic food which uh, doesn't use fertilizer and insecticide now this is very tough on our part in our area because very less people do organic farming the organic food are very expensive and we don't know okay so it is very difficult to follow but if we can follow that we should eat food which is organically prepared then go for it it's eat some food which is pre digested by bacteria or fungi like yogurt or dahi because they are good source of vitamin b12 and probiotic that is good bacteria now you have to remember that our gut are lined by trillions of bacteria okay their number is 10 times more than the number of cells you have second thing their genetic material is 90 percent similar to human okay there's only 10 percent difference between their genetic material and our genetic material now this probiotic this good bacteria which lines are good are a primary defense mechanism it doesn't allow the bad bacteria comes inside second thing it secretes a lot of hormones which is very essential for our growth and maintaining homeostasis 70% of humidity is derived from this microbiome. It secretes a lot of hormone like serotonin and all. So your brain health also depends upon your gut. So it's found that in the research, the variety of bacteria, fungi, protein, whatever uh, the microbiota is there in our gut is responsible for your health. And this microbiota depends upon your diet because if you want to grow this microbiota, it, re it requires prebiotic. It requires certain substance called as oligosaccharide. And this oligosaccharide are, oligosaccharide are present in plant-based diet. So if you eat unprocessed food, it, it is a diet for the, this good bacteria. And their population increase, their biodiversity increases. But if you eat processed food, if you eat chemically containing food, then you, if you eat a lot of antibiotic, their numbers and their biodiversity reduce. Okay, so, and as the biodiversity reduced, your immunity goes down, your digestion goes down, your mental health also goes down. So our health is also responsible. The biodiversity and the population of microbiota which is present in our gut and we have to keep this microbiota in a very healthy state to remain healthy and how it is kept by eating unprocessed plant-based diet if you have to eat sweet you have to find them in a nature okay so don't eat sweets which is prepared by cooperation eat sweets which is naturally present like in you know, a fruits because it doesn't increase your glucose level because it is packed with uh, fiber and it, it gives you satiety so you don't keep on consuming that sugar so 
as far as fruit and fruit juice is concerned try to consume food fruits rather than fr fruit juice now which food one should avoid we should avoid caffeinated sugarated drink junk food sweet fried food as it contain trans fat excess salt dalda ice cream polished rice maida margarine avoid packaged food as it contain lots of chemicals which is bad for our health what happens in this processing they remove the fibers they remove the fat they remove the nutrients they add lot of sugar they add lot of salt they add lot of coloring agent preservative okay and it is packed in the plastic so all this makes this food extremely toxic to your body now i will give an example if you prepare a food at your home so what is the shelf life of that food okay so it it may last for few hours and it will rot so the natural food should rot eventually rot now you, if you take the example of the processed food what is the shelf life the processed fruit juice which is present in a bottle what is the shelf life it lasts for months years huh? so what happens we are not only the, uh, the organism on this earth there are so many bacteria fungi and they need the same nutrient as we do we are competitor so the food get rot because of this bacteria fungi because they want that nutrient okay but when they package this food no bacteria fungi goes into this food because they are more intelligent than this food doesn't contain any nutrients and we keep on consuming nutrients okay so the processing is very bad so if you avoid sugar and avoid food which is processed which is prepared by any industry then you will completely transform your health avoid sugar in any form okay sugar is a poison it is more poisonous than any other poison on earth because there are so many poison which is label which is banned by government but sugar in fact is subsidized by government and we use consume when we are happy we have party we have anything and then we keep on consuming this sugar so avoid sugar in any form decrease its uh, intake wheat do not eat refined flour do not remove husk and do not eat maida or bread try to keep that husk that fiber which will reduce your wheat and don't eat wheat only okay eat millet as well eat jowar bajra nachni brown rice so your load of wheat your load of gluten will reduce if you just diversify to bajra jowar Na nagli and brown rice wheat so one day wheat one day bajra one day jowar one day brown rice so your gluten load will reduce now how to eat now we have seen in that graph as we are eating more frequently that is causing insulin resistance so we have to eat in the window of 8 to 10 hours okay when our ancestor is to eat just rem remember so we have seen that we have to eat the way our grandparents used to eat so what our grandparents used to eat they used to have a breakfast they used to go to a field they used to work they have to have a lunch and they have to have a dinner before sunset okay so three times they used to do a lot of work they used to walk and three times before sunset so you have to follow this kind of dietary patterns so you have to eat before 6 pm or before sunset now somebody says it is not possible now try to adjust it i have told you nothing is a kind of a uh, fixed things you have to change so by doing eating in, in the window of 8 to 10 hours you are giving your pancreas your insulin rest for 14 to 16 hours so when they get rest they are energized they are ready to work their their insulin sensitivity is maintained okay and as the insulin sensitivity is maintained then you will lose weight you will reverse your diabetes so eat in a short window of 8 to 10 hour and if it is not possible for to eat before sunset you have to skip two 
dinner per week, at least two dinner, whatever way. So I personally do, I take a breakfast in the morning and I take next meal at four o'clock or five o'clock and that's it. I don't take anything. I do not drink milk since last 24 years. We consume a very minimal amount of sugar at home. So two times and whatever you have to eat, you eat at that time. If you have to consume, uh, say fruits, you have to eat. You cannot eat in between because anything you eat shoots up your insulin. And if you don't give rest to your pancreas and insulin, your insulin resistance will increase. So whatever you have to eat, if you have to eat sweet, eat when you are eating. Okay. So eat in the window of eight to 10 hours, eat according to the level of activity and time of day. We all know that our system, our digestion also depends upon the sun. When there is a sun, our energy is at higher level. We eat, it is digested, it is used to, uh, to produce the energy whole day. And after sunset, we do not do too much of work and whatever we eat, it goes and stored as a fat. Okay, so try to eat according to the level. So it is said that have a uh, breakfast like a king, lunch like a prince and uh, uh, dinner like a pauper. So you have to eat according to the level of activity. If you do not able to follow uh, eating before sunset, then you have to have at least two hours between your dinner and sleep. So what happens? We eat and go to sleep. Okay, so don't do it. At least have two hours between your dinner and sleep. And do intermittent fasting. Now this intermittent fasting is the only solution for reversal of diabetes, reversal of, di uh, uh, reversal of diabetes, obesity, and heart disease. Okay, so there has been a lot of research and I'll discuss it within a minute. And you have to drink at least 10 glass of water and have a sip of water regularly. Now few rule regarding eating. Okay, so stop eating just before you are full. What happens, we kept on consuming, we stuff our stomach with a lot of food. That is a problem. We have to eat to 75% to 80% of your capacity. In Okinawa, people eat 75 to 80%. There is a terminology called as hara harachibhu. So they eat when their stomach is 70 to 75% full. So stop eating just you are full. Eat when you are hungry, not when you are bored. Now what happens? The food is to our health and uh, uh, for satiety. But now the food is used for so many purposes. You're watching match, you're watching television, you're eating, you're talking, you're having party, you're eating, you're doing work, you're eating, you're bored, you're eating, you're angry, you're eating. So food is used for so many purposes. Okay, so, so food is not substitute for your boredom. So whenever you are hungry, eat. Take the clue in your body to eat. Eat very slowly. In the research, it is in the Ayurveda, it is found that you have to chew your food 52 times. Why? Because your saliva is mixed properly. It is pre-digested at your mouth itself. So it is very easy to digest. So eat very slowly. And when you eat slowly, you consume less. If you eat very fast, then you eat a lot of food because at least 20 minutes is required for your intestine and stomach to tell your brain that enough. So if you eat within 10 minutes, you will consume a lot of food and then it's already you are consumed a lot of food. So if you eat slowly, your body will, your stomach will tell to your brain, now it's enough. Okay. By smaller plates and glasses in the research, it's found that those who eat on a smaller plates and glasses, they consume less food. So I have discussed that breakfast like king, lunch like a prince and dinner like a pauper. Avoid snake, snacks. So I told you snacking causes consistently elevated insulin level and you, I mean, uh, uh, 
prefer eating a lot of packaged food during snacking then it's a problem prefer eating at a dining table now we eat in the car we eat on the table that's cause problem if you designate that this is a dining table and you have to eat on that particular table with your all family members then you consume less food try not to eat alone if you eat alone you consume lot of food when you eat with other people you are conscious that other people are seeing then you eat less food treat treat as a treat now what happens initially when the ice creams were not available when the cakes were not available we used to prepare at home and you know how much efforts and time it requires to prepare cake and ice cream so we consume once in a month twice in a month okay but what happens the corporation has made it easy for you to, and these things are very easily available ice cream snacks cake and you consumes every day so don't so keep this treat you prepare at home cook yourself then you will consume it less what happens as you have delegated your kitchen to the corporation and the corporation has exploited that has caused all this problem so try to eat homemade cook food cook yourself and treat when it is a treat now there are certain people who will insist that uh, uh, there sometimes you need to eat some packaged food so there are certain rules regarding eating packaged food don't eat anything your great grandmother would wouldn't recognize as a food does your grandmother recognize burger cheese and pizza she will not recognize it so ask your grandmother have you ate this food during your childhood and all so if they says yes eat it if they say no don't eat it that's why it's called as paleolithic diet avoid food products containing ingredient that no ordinary human being would keep in pantry have you heard about ethoxylated diglyceride cellulose xanthan gum calcium propionate ammonium sulfate okay have you heard about this name no if you wouldn't cook with uh, with if you wouldn't cook taking this ingredient then why you let other people cook for you with this ingredient okay avoid food products that contain high fructose corn syrup we have seen that it is highly toxic avoid food that have some form of sugar or sweetener listed among the top 3 ingredient avoid any food product that contain more than 5 ingredient avoid food product that makes health claim now the apple themselves the, the, the farmers are poor they don't advertise okay the apple do not claim that i am very healthy but there are so many products that will have a health claim uh, health claim which is advertised on television so any products which is advertised and makes health claim should avoid it avoid food products which uh, uses word like light low fat non fat in their name so it indicate that it contain excess sugar and salt okay avoid food you see advertised on television eat only food that eventually rot we have seen that we are in competition with other bacteria they are more intelligent they won't eat this processed food it only food that has been cooked cooked by hu human and not by corporation now how much to eat so patanjali has said you have to fill your stomach half with the food one fourth with water and one fourth with air okay so you have to eat calmly with gratitude to the food and those who have produced and prepared okay now how many of you gratitude express gratitude for the farmers for the uh, wife uh, uh, which uh, cooks the food okay on a lighter note ek bar kya hota hai ki mulla nasruddin apne friend ke paas jata hai aur he tells the friend ki mere na meri wife ke sath bahut jhagde hote hai kya karu the friend bolta hai ki do you praise your wife's work her food mulla nasruddin says no well do go today and praise your wife's the food which is prepared by your wife now mulla nasruddin goes he eats the biryani and he says what a fantastic biryani i have ate i have not ate this kind of biryani in my whole life 
he thought that the wife would be very happy but the wife took out the balloon and started hitting mulla nasruddin with the balloon so the mulla nasruddin said stop stop why are you beating me i have praised your food the wife said i am preparing this kind of biryani since last 10 years and you have not praised me single time and today this biryani has given by our neighbor and you are praising like crazy okay so praise your wife for the food and praise it consistently now few words about intermittent fasting now we have seen that dieting doesn't work if you reduce the caloric intake consistently over a period of time your basal metabolic rate reduced your hunger increased and you regain weight now in the research it's found that by doing bariatric surgery there is a tremendous reduction in weight and it cures diabetes now what is a bariatric surgery it is nothing but a surgically enforced fasting so if you want to lose weight if you want to undo uh, uh, reverse diabetes then why do uh, why do you want to unnecessarily undergo knife and do surgery do intermittent fasting okay if you do intermittent fasting it it works like a bariatric surgery and it will reduce your weight it will reverse your diabetes it will reverse your coronary blockage and this is research i am not talking it's research okay in the research it's uh, proven that if you do intermittent fasting your weight reduced your insulin sensitivity is increased your insulin resistance decreases it cure diabetes and reduce chance of heart disease and metabolic syndrome now why this happen now our ancestry used to do fasting they used to do it for religious purpose for inner purification for spiritual purification but mind you in the research now 2 years back a one scientist got nobel prize and he found out a phenomenon called as autophagy now what is this autophagy this is a mechanism with which the cell repair its damaged organelles and produce a new organelle okay so it's a body's repair mechanism and in the research it's found that this autophagy is enhanced when you do fasting okay so our ancestors used to do fasting can you imagine that even not knowing this autophagy phenomenon they know that fasting is essential for mental uh, for physical as well as spiritual purification okay and we have forgotten that principle they used to fast they used to have a water fasting and we have forgotten that phenomenon so start using intermittent fasting so how do you fast there are many ways you fast simplest ways i have told you that you have to eat in a short window of 8 hours and give, uh, have fasting for 16 hours there are other methods 18 hour fasting 24 hour fasting 36 hour fasting 48 hours fasting so this is for advanced level but for time being at least start doing this 14 hour to 16 hour fasting by having your dinner before sunset or skipping your lunch twice a week or whatever times you feel it comfortable okay so in fasting what happens you may feel hungry now remember the hunger comes in waves and it disappear okay so you have to tide over that hunger and after that you will become normal now i have now i'm i like to tell my example few years back i told you five years back my health was in a bad shape so by 10 o'clock i used to get a tremors when i do not used to have a breakfast at 2 o'clock i used to get tremor if i do not have to lunch then i studied this diet i told you i read hundreds thousands of book now i was psychologically prepared because i heard about a study a man did a fasting and he is in a greenish book of world record and he did a fasting for 370 days okay and he just had a lime water and some vitamin supplements and he survived and not only survived he was energetic and he lost his weight from 40 400 pounds to 200 pounds and he was feeling very energetic so i thought hey he can do fasting for 370 days can't and can't i fast for few hours and then i started fasting for 36 hours and i did gym i did my work and i was feeling quite energetic and 
mind you the fast this food and all is become a psychological okay you have been bombarded that you have to have breakfast then snack then lunch then snack dinner and it has become your habit your body is used to it and it is more of habit as well as psychological things and if you are mentally prepared after going through this talk then you can start fasting and even if you get hunger then you can drink lime water you can drink uh, green tea you can have a nuts you can have salads carrots fruits but i would advise you not to drink anything so if you do this fasting then you will completely transform your life so dear friends now we have come to the end of the talk and i'm going to take questions after it and at the end of session i have a gift for you those who are attended gift i'll send you a ebook of uh, the uh, diet how to lose belly fat without dieting so stay till the end so friends to summarize the incidence of obesity diabetes is progressively increasing all over the world okay till date the concept about obesity is that obesity is because of excess eating and less exercise but with the research it is found that the theory is not true to the certain extent new research says diabetes is because of hormonal imbalance known as hormonal theory of obesity and it is found that that excess insulin insulin resistance excess cortisol is responsible for obesity diabetes and metabolic syndrome why insulin is increasing because we are consuming lot of processed food processed carbohydrate lot of wheat lot of sugar high fructose corn syrup and why the insulin resistance is increasing because we are eating too frequently okay the low fat diet which various health organization still recommend for obesity diabetes heart disease is complete failure was based on misinterpretation of data and unintentionally caused more harm in fact new research suggests that saturated for a fat in a natural form is good for health because our brain contain 70% of fat our cell membrane contain lots of fat our hormones are synthesized by cholesterol 80% of cholesterol is synthesized in body and 2% 20% come from uh, exogenous source so what is bad is trans fat what is bad is refined vegetable oil what is bad is processed oil there is a wide variation of people who consumes various kinds of diet and they are healthy we have seen that certain people consume 80 to 90% of fat certain people consume 80 to 90% of protein and certain pe people consume 80 to 90% of carbohydrate still they are healthy and the incidence of chronic disorders and cancers are very less in them but when they started consuming so called as western diet processed food sugar packaged food the incidence of chronic disease increased exponentially and when they came back to their original diet again this disease reversed okay so this chronic disorder disorders are not because of excess fat or excess protein or excess carbohydrate but because of refining because of industrialization because of processing and because of sugar the food we should eat is whole unprocessed cereal pulses sprouted beans vegetable fruits roots yogurts we should eat from 10 am to 6 pm 8 hour window so that pancreas insulin get rest for 16 hour so that insulin sensitivity is maintained one should eat 75% of the capacity of the stomach one should do intermittent fasting to keep fit one should do light walking after eating one should completely avoid packaged food sugar containing caffeinated cold drinks junk food refined carbohydrate trans fat high fructose corn syrup avoid frequent snacking avoid animal food poultry which is grown with the help of hormones antibiotic which enter in our food chain and which causes various diseases prefer organic food as far as possible avoid vegetable and fruits which is grown with the help of fertilizer insecticide as these are carcinogenic prefer food grown on organic farm 
and thank you so much for your kind attention and write in the question and answer section and i'm going to take all the questions write in the chat box did you got insight about the healthy diet okay and stay till the end i'm going to share a gift for you i'm going to give gift for those people i'm going to give a gift for those people who stay till end and i'm going to invite you to my community if you want to join my community stay till the end write in the chat box your questions and i'm going to take these questions now if you got inside of what to eat how to eat write in the chat box bulb on right in the chat box bulb on right in the chat box there are so many questions i'm going to take these questions write in the chat box if you it was insightful what is your take on today's topic now i'm going to take questions now there are a lot of questions which has come so kamal ji has said for indian population any specific study india is very vast country with different culture and extreme weather now i have told you that don't depends on the history don't depends on science we have discussed that we have to eat culturally suitable environmentally suitable paleolithic diet which your great grandparents used to eat so there is no fixed diet there's so much of diversity in uh, himalaya there is a snowfall in chennai there is a lot of heat so you can't have a same diet okay so just ask this is a common sense it's not science so you have to take a cue from the studies which has done by you know various population and tailor it and it is not science it's a common sense and i have told you that we have to eat what our great grandparents used to eat okay so study is not required just you have to eat the diet which is culturally suitable and which is environmentally suitable and which is very Uh, your great grandparent used to eat these are the three principle you if you follow that you don't require any study you don't require any science you don't require anything okay uh somebody is asked what about impurities present in uh ghani direct oil now that's why we are now there is a, a terminology called as autorexia what is autorexia it's a unhealthy obsession to eating healthy food we are very concerned about carbohydrate protein fat antioxidant calories okay and we don't give any things to the nutrient uh, to the whole food okay there is a whole food it is not we are whole body we are not uh, hand eyes okay nose on a lighter note once a patient goes to a doctor and he says doctor i have a severe pain in my right uh, eyes the doctor says which pain, which eyes you are having a pain he says i have pain in my right eyes he says sorry i am a doctor of a left eye okay so it has so compartmentalized we think that the, there's a, a doctor for kidney nephrologist doctor for heart cardiologist doctor for brain neurologist we don't think the whole thing okay similar way we have divided the food into the protein fat calories we don't th- say the food in a totality so we are very obsessed about nutrients impurity now in ghana you can go and you can directly see okay and extract the oil from the ground not use it that oil doesn't contain any this thing you go take your coconuts have extract the oil it doesn't take this thing this is the things which has put in our mind by industrial industry that this oil is lot of impurity you have to impure remove the impure so they will say it is a refined oil mind you you go to the google and you find out the process how this processing is done it contains 10 steps and 10 chemicals are added and it is highly processed okay it is highly processed so it is better you have some impurity in a oil which is prepared in a khana so i think i have asked answered your question 
Kamal has asked, do you lose muscle mass if you follow intermittent fasting? So it's very excellent question. So in the research, it is found that, okay, mind you, in the research, this is all based on research. In the research, it is found that when you do intermittent fasting, you don't lose your muscle mass. I'm, I'm just telling you the fact, because it's common sense. Now, when there is a cold, I think somebody is from Simla, if there is a cold, in winter, what we do, first, we have a fire in our home and we take the help of wood and create a fire and we get the heat from it. If you are having a cold, do you directly throw your sofa because it contain uh, uh, wood in the fire to get the heat? No, okay, so first you take the help of wood, which is commercially available. So similarly, when we are fasting, first, when we eat, we utilize the glucose. It goes, our body use, it is stored as a glycogen. Okay. And when we are fasting, this glycogen is broken down into glucose and it causes, it gives you energy and it lasts for 24 hours. And once this glycogen is uh, uh, used, then the body takes the fat, it burns the fat and it takes the energy from the fat and it lasts for many days. And when this fat is utilized, then the body takes the protein. Okay, so first the glycogen is burned, then the fat is burned, then the protein is burned. So if you do intermittent fasting, you will not lose your muscle mass. Okay, you will lose your fat and it is very good for your health. Rachel Ji has asked, should diabetes eat frequently? So I have answered these things. Okay, so all the International Diabetic Association will say, eat too early, three early. I have told you the basic science, common sense. If you eat, insulin goes up. And if you don't eat, insulin goes down, it maintains insulin sensitivity. But if you eat too early, the insulin will keep, it will be continuously elevated and anything which is consistently elevated in a body, the body develop resistance to it. To the, and that insulin resistance cause obesity, diabetes. So we are eating more too frequently and it cause problem. Now I've told you common sense, ask your grandmother, how many times she used to eat? She will tell, I used to have breakfast, I used to lunch and I used to have dinner before sunset. Eat as your grandparents used to eat. Now, Rachel has asked, are you an MBBS doctor? Okay, I am done MBBS from prestigious BJ Medical College in Sasuna Hospital, Mumbai. I did MD in pediatric from one of the top college, KM Hospital in Mumbai and St. Jesus Medical College. I did super specialization. I'm a basically a pediatric neurologist. I I cure, I have cured lakhs of uh, children up to 18 years, their neurological disorder, epilepsy. So I am a super specialist. So can you imagine I am a allopathic doctor, but I'm talking all the holistic science. So I am a super specialist, not only MBBS, I did MD and as well as fellowship in a pediatric neurology. So Kamalji has asked, is Jagri better than sugar? Now, I told you, that sugar is a bad for our health. So you consume in any form, which is prepared by man. Okay, jagger is prepared by man. Sugar is prepared by man. The sugar which is present in a food is not prepared by man. So consume sugar, which is present in a natural form. So even if you consume jaggery, if you consume sugar, it goes in your body. It is con uh, converted into glucose. Okay. So even if you consume jaggery and even if you consume sugar, it is same, but if you want to consume, if you have a, a pole between sugar and jaggery, jaggery is a better, okay? So if you want to consume, eat jaggery, but consume in a less quantity. Now, doctor says I should eat small chunk five times a day. I come out of IBS, IBD with the help of mod modern medicine. Doctor prohibit fasting for me. Now, I told you, this is for a general population, okay? 
if you have a specific disorder you can take the advice of your doctor okay so it is not i'm consult giving consulting it's a overview and it depends upon if you want to ask me specific then you you consult your doctor for your specific uh, this thing and i told you this this science is not taught in literature i'm telling you i am a, a super specialist i have studied it from one of the top medical colleges of this country km hospital mumbai okay which is the top most in the maharashtra and in our medical literature we are not about taught about nutrition okay we are taught about diseases how to cure it we are not about about holistic health we are not taught about prevention so so many doctors is not aware about this i'm telling you this things is not in a literature even if so many doctors tell you eat to to early eat this thing eat that thing but this is a new research and it is based on common sense thank you ari prashad ji you are written thank you for the insight now somebody asked me rachel ji asked me cattle based product might include e coli leptospira bacteria need to purify the ghani oil etc products as scientists say scientists have, uh, uh, has to be based on how we forgot it as stomach is hypersensitive then i cannot eat simple chili are and who fo standard federal authority standard need to be followed while manufacturing refined pod, uh, refined product your answer is not satisfying sorry you you yourself claim to be neurologist pediatric so you are your own answer part of community that so i have told you that there are so many organization they still recommend based on the data which is done by framingham study okay so you how to have a science and common sense goes hand in hand and use things which is both congruent science and common sense and our culture which is congruent if we are follow this small basic principle we will uh, lead a very healthy life if we are very obsessed on nutrients and other reductionist approach because science is you have all access of nutrients and all access of science but still the incidence of obesity diabetes heart disease are increasing exponentially so why it's happening okay so there is something we are not aware of the fact the science is in a continuous evolution and I, what i am telling you it's a uh, now based on the recent research so you can again have uh, research uh, uh, articles which i can provide you and you go can go through it sugar cane juice i told you any things which contain which is uh, prepared by man causes increase in glucose increase in insulin level so you can have sugar cane but uh, on a modest level grandma's time and life was different my grannies were not alive please speak in terms of today's lifestyle sir so even if i have told you i have given the research the fact about the traditional diet and the diet which is culturally be suitable okay so even if in your relative you can have any older member you can ask them what they their diet used to uh, they used to consume the diet and then you can follow that diet now atul ji has asked what is your suggestion on herbalife products they claim it has less uh, gi and we can replace the meal by shake Now, again told you common sense any food any nutrients which is prepared by industries with a high health claim are not good for your health okay i personally use this product and lost 8 kg in month but i stopped it and regained it i don't want to depend on any product request you to suggest so i am telling you any product which gives you high health claim which tells you that it this you will reduce weight is totally flawed okay it is it will not help you to have health basic things eat food plant based eat in a moderate amount okay and 
it which is culturally and environmentally suitable and don't eat processed food don't eat sugar that simple this is as simple don't make it complicated okay so friends if you have any questions you can write down in the chat box those who want to join me in my community thank you so much atul ji for your feedback so those now i have given a lot of insight now those who want to join community who want to learn more about health holistic health then i would give you the opportunity to join my community and i am going to share these things with you so those who want to take their health to the next level those who want to attend health uh, holistic health they, they can stay now now i have established a health and happiness community i have established this community with certain principle and these are the principle <clears throat> code of honor of my community sorry just i'll have water <clears throat> the member of my community try to achieve holistic health in every sphere of life it's personal social professional spiritual and guide their family and friends to attend the same the member live the life with mindfulness and awareness the member lives in a present moment accepting the life as in a non judgmental way they have the courage to change the thing they can change and they have the wisdom to accept the things they cannot change the third principle is environmental protection the member pledges to protect the environment by saving water maintaining cleanliness and avoiding pollution of the environment in whatever way possible leadership the change uh, each and each and every member of my community is leader because the change start with me you cannot change other people before changing yourself you have to change yourself and set an example so the member is a torch bearer to the society the fifth principle is kaizen kaizen means a continuous daily improvement the member strive for the continuous daily improvement okay he want to be a better person today as compared to yesterday okay he learn he implement and he teach and he is in competition with himself not somebody else okay he want to improve himself and he believe in taking action and the sixth principle is contribution to the society the members try to contribute in whatever possible way to the society it may be monetary it may be knowledge it may be time and skill okay so why i have started this community so those who have attended late i have shared my story five years back my health was in a bad shape i had put on 10 kg of weight i was completely stressed and burnt out and i was looking much older than my chronological age that i stopped introspected i started reading a lot of books on health spirituality self help book i formulated certain principle i implemented it and i completely transformed my life and i started sharing this principle to many people so i am on a mission to educate 2 million to educate and inspire 2 million people about stress its adverse effect chronic disorder and how to manage it effectively so as to lead healthy happy and more fulfilling life because we people are suffering from this chronic disorder which compromise our quality of life a lot of millions of rupees are spent on its treatment we have seen that those who have chronic disorder they have high chances of becoming serious and die during corona pandemic so i am on a mission to educate and inspire the people to lead holistic life and i have conducted a lot of seminar workshop for so many organization indian association of pediatrics indian medical association many corporation lot of schools colleges i want to just inspire people to follow holistic health and it is based on spirituality it is based on common sense it is based on science okay and many people thousands of people has been transform i have conducted for various police central 
industrial security forces, so many and workshop and webinar nowadays, I have connected hundreds of workshop and live workshop for so many organization. Also on various platform. I have published this book, post Race, Give Me a Break, and which has become an international bestseller on Amazon. You can see international bestseller tag. Recently published a book, 17 Powerful Secrets to Manage Stress During Corona Pandemic. Now, why I'm sharing my journey? My journey was like this, and it went out. I was completely stressed out, burnt out. And then I read hundreds and thousands of books, got insight, and then, it, my life improved and I started sharing that my insight and principle to the society. Now, if you do not want to go through this lower trajectory, because it, it's very time consuming, you have to read, you have to uh, learn and undergo a lot of and waste a lot of your time to regain your health. If it's a wisdom that if you want to learn, learn from a person who has undergone this, who knows the path to the, the health and the success and learn from it so that you can bypass this valley and you can save a lot of hardship, a lot of year of your life. And if you learn, so that's why I'm acting as a bridge so that you do not go through this valley of stress, anxiety, diseases. And that's why I'm doing a lot of workshops, seminar, and I have a developed community and I have a video based online digital course on holistic health named Stress Management Blueprint, a gateway to the health and happiness. So who should join this community? If you are stressed out, if you have chronic disease like obesity, diabetes, hypertension, heart disease, and want to reverse them, if you want to have these diseases, if you want to prevent these diseases entering in your life, if you want to lose weight and reverse diabetes, if any family members have chronic diseases, if you want to remain healthy for a prolonged period of time and avoid spending lakhs of rupees on popping pill, if you think that you are unsuccessful person, there's unhappiness. If you think that there's other modality of treatment, which is health oriented, not disease oriented. If you're a doctor and want to treat your patients in a holistic way, if you want to succeed in your life and uh, climb the corporate ladder, because if you are healthy, you will focus on your professional life. Your efficiency will increase exponentially. If you want to have healthy relationship with your partner, if you want to become healthy, happy, and have peace of mind, then join my community. A lot of people has transformed their life. You can have, you can see the, there's so many review by joining my community. Now, I have this holistic health program, which is video based and named Stress Management Blueprint, a gateway to the health and happiness. And it consists of a lot of uh, sub program, okay? So now this, the, what I have discussed is a tip of iceberg in the nutrition, okay? So I have a course on a nutrition, which is very exhaustive, okay? And very intensive. And I have sub course, on a different health related topic. So I have this physical exercise blueprint where I will teach you to the video best course, which is the best exercise, then progressive muscle relaxation. How to do progressive muscle relaxation when you are stressed, the technique. Then sleep, how sleep is essential for our health and how to have a good sleep. Now diet, I have discussed a tip of iceberg. I have an intensive program about diet. Then laughter, how the laughter is helpful, how you can bring laughter in your life, how diary writing is very essential to reduce your stress, anxiety, depression, and lead a healthy life. How music therapy and how you can use music therapy to attain holistic health. Then guided imagery. Sometimes you are help, helpless, you are very stressed out, 
and you want to get rid of your current unhealthy environment then you can use this guided imagery and uh, just have a, a change in the atmosphere because if imagine something and it is actually our mind doesn't differentiate so if you imagine that you are at a beach or in the jungle at the seashore or in the bank of river and you are experiencing the peace happiness your mind will accept and you will change your mind so i'll teach you how to do guided imagery then how to have a awesome relationship with your spouse i have the course on it how to have a social support how to give your social support and how to have a social support which can be utilized in our uh, in our uh, need of our volunteering now in the research it's found that those who do volunteer have a awesome life they have a healthy life so you have to contribute to your society in whatever way possible maybe monetary by sharing your knowledge your insight helping somebody so you have to do volunteering the way i am doing i am conducting lot of seminar webinar and so many people are uh, uh, getting insight they are going so they are getting a lot of energy they are getting a lot of insight and they are going and studying now i have discussed i have told you go and read about nutrition there are so many books by michael pollan by uh, jason fang by dr michael greger and in this book they have discussed cutting edge cutting edge science and the papers okay and this talk is based on reading so much and so much so many scientifically based research so you you go read and then you also teach other people about it okay so just get some insight you do your research and then you have your own principle i am not telling you that you follow whatever i have told you i have just inspired you i have just ignited fire in you you go and you do your research and you modify and you start following it okay it's just insight inspiration and ignition the next course is on prayer blueprint how the player can be helpful to achieve the holistic health time management lack of time mismanagement of time is one of the stressor so how to manage your time how to increase your time this course is included now cognitive research uh, restructuring now everything on mindset and our belief system because our belief system create thoughts the thought create action the action create your character and your character create destiny so your destiny depends upon your belief system and our belief system is always based on negative conditioning okay you are failure you cannot be successful you are donkey you are very bad at maths you will not be successful in your life these are the negative things which gone on our subconscious mind and the word is bad uh, place so our belief system is based on negativity and the way we deal with our stress our challenges our uh, world is based on this negative premises negative belief system so how to change this negative belief system so that to have a very productive very help, happy and helpful life so i have discussed this in a cognitive restructuring blueprint i have a course on yoga and meditation now meditation has been extensively researched all over the world and it has lot of health benefit so i'll teach you how to do mindful meditation in this course then meaning of life and then what is happiness so dear friends these are so many courses okay and i have bundled it into one course again you will be part of my private group so you will get access to this video based course on top of it you will be part of my private group where i am will be conducting uh, this kind of a teaching session which would be very intensive weekly and i will be answering your question and answer so there would be weekly mastermind classes and i'll be giving you lots of ebooks okay so the total cost of this video based courses there are almost 17 courses then private group and my 
uh, e-books. The total cost is 49,000. It's invaluable, but the cost is 49,999. But because of this Corona pandemic, I am giving you this course at 4,999 for the participant, for today's participant only till the end of this talk. So if you want to have this 17 video based course, want to be part of my community, want to have access to my weekly mastermind classes where I'm gonna discuss about health and happiness. So you can join my this community by a little investment of 4,999 rupees. So I'm gonna give you a link in the chat box. Those who can want to part of my community, you can click this link and become the part of community. So friends, I discussed about the nutrition, what we have to eat, what we do not have to eat, how to eat. I hope <clears throat> you will follow this principle, you will do your research, you will implement it, you will transform your life, you will be the torch bearer to the society and you will help to not only change yourself, but to bring a positive atmosphere to yourself. Now, if you want, because you know that your life depends upon the people who you are surrounded with you and who your guide is, who your mentor is. If you want to have a mentor like me, want you to guide to the, your holistic health, not only nutrition, but other part, know the technique to have a holistic health, join my community by the minimum investment of 4,999 by clicking the link, which I have given in the chat box. Okay, so you will get access to this community. You will get access, lifelong access. There are almost 80 videos and uh, uh, 17 uh, courses, bundle of courses and weekly mastermind classes and eBooks, you will get access, okay. So thousands of people has transformed their life. I invite you to join this community because I am on a mission to inspire one, two million people about holistic health. So write in the chat box what you found from today's talk, write in the chat box. So if you want to become a part of community, just go click the link. The link is given in the chat box. You can contact, communicate me on this uh, uh, email. If you have any doubt about health, I'm just writing down in the chat box. Just note it down. Okay. And if you want to get insight about your health, you can visit my website. I'm giving you the link of my website. Yeah. So in my website, you can get a detailed knowledge about holistic health as well. But if you want to have a mentor like me, if you are you want to have a hand holding to your holistic health, be part of community, surrounded by the people who are health conscious because your life depends upon the people who, with whom you keep contact with, whom you are surrounded by. It is said that your weight depends upon the five person you keep in contact with. You take five people you frequently keep in contact, take their weight, take their average, okay? And your weight would be around it. Your bank balance would be depend upon the five to 10 people who keep in contact with you, okay? Average bank balance of these people. Because you get inspiration, you get energy being the part of group. So if you want to take a holistic health, you want uh, other people who are health conscious and you want to have a mentor like me, you can join my community. 
by clicking the link which is given in the uh, chat box where you will get a lifetime access to the video based course you will get a lifetime uh, access to all these courses which you you know the way i have explained so i teach in a very simplified manner with the fusion of science and spirituality and it is very easy to implement and so nowadays because of the corona pandemic the health has become a paramount important the investment of 4999 is very minuscule okay so i am giving for uh, people who are health conscious okay so join my community by the minimum investment because this is utilized for doing this kind of program and inspiring millions of people so you can be a part of community transform your life and be uh, helpful in the mission okay so you can be a part of community by clicking the link which is given in the okay so right in the chat box now how was the session if it is awesome right awesome in the chat box how was the session today's session right in the chat box awesome thank you so much for your feedback right awesome in the chat box if you got a, a, a insight about a diet from today's session give your feedback how was the session if it is you learned a lot right awesome in the chat box thank you so much for your feedback now we know that we have taken a poll at the start of the talk and i hope a lot of your issues has been cleared okay now i would like to take this poll again and see how the uh, your uh, thinking pattern has changed okay now i'm going to launch a poll again five polls okay so do you want to lose weight and become happy okay now you are inspired that the obesity diabetes heart disease cause lot of health related problems and it shorten life so you want to lose to become so 100% want to lose weight okay so taking the second poll do you want to know which is the best diet so we all know now everybody knows what is the best diet 100% great great third poll which is the best diet now we know that low fat diet ketogenic diet high protein diet is not the best diet the diet which your ancestor used to follow which your great grandparents used to follow which is culturally suitable which is suitable to the environment is the best diet okay so it may be high protein diet it may be high carbohydrate diet it may be high fat diet but it should be followed by your grandparents it should be followed by your this thing so 100% are now convinced that reductionist approach doesn't work so how many times one should eat okay so two times great great so don't eat too frequently eat as fre less frequently as possible so two to three times per day but if you want to if you are obese and if you want to reverse your diabetes then you can eat it once in a time or you can have 36 hour 46 hour fast so i'll discuss this in my course when you become a part of my community but at least you you eat two to three times per day okay so last poll so which is the best method to assess obesity 
hundred percent says best to your pressure. Great, great. So I'm very, very happy. I'm super happy that I'm able to inspire you. I'm able to give a clarity to you. So you now you can start taking your health to the next level. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your participation. You are here till two and a half hour. It indicates that you want to take your health to the next level. You want to become slim and fit. You want to remember achieve holistic health. You want to inspire other people and you, you want to grow in your professional, personal, spiritual life. Thank you so much, all of you for being here today. Again, if you want to be a part of community, you can enter by clicking the link. Otherwise, whatever I taught you today, it will completely transform your life. Thank you so much. Keep in touch. If you have any query, I've given my email. You can contact me. Okay. Keep in touch. Be a part of community. And thank you so much. Thank you so much. Enjoy your weekend. And I wish you a very happy, healthy life ahead. Wear a mask, stay away from crowd, have social distancing, eat healthy food, do physical exercise, do mindful meditation, do yoga, pranayam, have a social uh, contact, keep in touch with your friends and lead healthy life. Thank you so much.